Welcome to the Porsche Club Insider, your one stop for all things Porsche and PCA. Here's your host, Vu Gwynn, and the Insider Crew. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 33. Around the table, we have Manny Albin, Damon Lowney, and of course, Robert's behind the computer making everything happen for us. Man, I had a great weekend. How about you guys? Yeah, it's uh, the weather in New Jersey where, where we were at was uh, awesome. They couldn't have asked for better weather for a Porsche event. I wasn't sure I was going to be able to go to Boardwalk Reunion because we were supposed to be in Chicago to do some filming. But unfortunately, that got canceled, or fortunately, it got canceled because um, I got a hall pass to go to uh, to Ocean City, New Jersey. And uh, before we get into that, though, uh, Damon's chomping at the bit to tell us news. Oh, is well, it auto uh, news? Oh, am I? Auto I don't want to seem too desperate to say how well I did. It. <laughs> autocross news. <laughs> yeah, so um, last autocross for the SCCA WDCR region, and this was my fastest run. And I went from fourth place in the local championship to third. So I, nice. I passed the guy who was right in front of me. So, uh, and if you watch this, this was my first run. We had four runs that, um, on Sunday, and um, every single run after this went slower. I kept making mistakes. So that's the worst when your first run's your best. Yeah. And then you're trying to figure out what it, what you've messed up that you yeah. can't improve on. You want to improve. Yeah. Not, uh, I hate that when the first yeah. run's the fastest. Well, it's interesting, too. Um, you know, Manny was uh, asking where I kept my excuse book, and uh, it's in the <laughs> glove box, apparently. <laughs> But uh, it's 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 kind of funny. Um, you have to pay attention to things like track surface. Even in autocross, you'd think in a parking lot you wouldn't have to think about marbles or or things getting on the track. But uh, you know, I came off of this first run. And I knew it was good, and the time it was a pretty dang quick first run. And I knew where I I could improve. But I went out there, and you know, I, I went offline to try and, and take a wider line, stay on the gas a little bit longer, but. I went right over a bunch of dust and stuff mm. because it was off the line everybody else was taking. Um, and I just couldn't, I couldn't so you bring got, it back. You I, got third place in the class for yeah. championship. Yeah, and third so place. You were, you were telling us yesterday. A participation award, in a sense, because no, I showed up. Third place is very good. Um, <laughs> but you were telling us that uh, it, it was actually an exciting uh, finish because uh, he was hovering between third and fourth. Yeah. And he needed someone who was in. Yeah, I, I had 28 points. The other person had 30. This other person had attended every single autocross, and I thought you could. You were required to have two drops, meaning you drop two of your slowest uh, times or, or you know Finishes, points events. Yeah. It was actually three, so I thought that I had gotten nine points for finishing second on Sunday, which would bring me up to thirty-seven points, and he finished in fourth so i believe that would have given him six points and i beat him by like one or two points nice but because there are three drops um i actually it was 35 for me and 30 for him oh so i oh, actually nice was job. in a I much thought better spot somebody's wife decided or yeah so ran and they finished so th this is another one of those things of you know there, there's always a bigger fish and um there's a uh, an autocrosser out there with an nd2 miata uh craig marhefka and he and his wife cindy go out and they autocross you know with all, all the different regions and car clubs and um so my time was a 52 973 he and i was 37th out of 145 people mm -hmm. so not bad he got a 50.3 and Whoa. was second or no he was third behind a shifter cart and some crazy guy in an S2000. Wow. And then everything else, all sorts of mach machinery. I've seen both of them drive. They're amazing. And yeah. the car looks pretty, like, I know it's not stock, but it looks very yeah. stock. It looks like a burgundy. It's simple bolt-ons. You know, yeah. STR, it's a great class. It's kind of like production, or maybe if you're on the low end of improved and PCA, you know, suspension, um, maybe transmission mounts. You can go to Sticky 200 Treadwear Tires. Um, but not a ton of stuff, but mm -hmm. enough to make it handle just a bit better. Yeah, but they, Craig's an amazing driver. His wife is also an amazing driver, but I, I edged her out by a little bit. So she, she came between me and, and the other guy. Oh, so, cool. so what are you going to do for the next year for the car? I'm going to get different tires. So for anybody who's considering Yokohama AO 52s they are awesome. I love them. They're my favorite tire. Um, but if you only have, and this is with camber plates on my car, um, I could get more camber and I have some things that maybe I'll try out 
in future years. But if you have negative two camber, um, you're going to be eating through your the edge of your tires in, I think it was 16 or 17 autocrosses and maybe a thousand miles of street driving. Tires are basically done. So did, so, you, <laughs> did you finish? Didn't you have a pulley project? Oh, yeah, yeah. So I totally forgot about that. On yeah. Friday, I, I updated to an underdrive pulley that's harmonically damped. And, um, you know, if you own a, a 986 or a 987 um, and you decide to put a lightweight flywheel onto it like I did, a billet lightweight single mass flywheel, um, the engine harmonics change and they can potentially damage your engine doesn't happen a lot, but it has happened. You know, I've, I've heard stories. I've seen stuff on forums. I've talked to uh, some people in the industry who deal with that type of stuff. And if you do put a lightweight flywheel on, you want to balance it off with a, a damped, you know, heavier, harmonically damped uh, underdrive pulley mm. or regular size pulley. doesn't matter. But something to, uh, to get rid of those vibrations and hopefully extend the life of your engine. So I saw you climbing around. You took out your passenger seat yeah. to get to it. The tolerance or which in which you had to slide in like the sockets and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. it's tight. You weren't um, struggling, but it, you, oh, it, wasn't, I, it wasn't a breeze either. You, later on, just so Vu came and uh, took a look at my work. Um, I think I was probably halfway through or I, I don't think I had started to grind off the timing boss yet. I don't <laughs> grind. <think. laughs> Yeah, I know what? you have to grind some things. So really? So the 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 regular pulley is larger than the underdrive. Um, and there's a hole where you put like a little bolt or oh. a tool that holds the, For the top crank and yeah, exactly. So you can actually take off the crank pulley bolt. Yeah. Um, with a smaller pulley, that's covering up the boss, which sticks uh. up. So you have to cut it off. Oh. You know, basically grind it down. Um, and you have a different sort of tool to uh to hold it. So the tool that was provided in the kit will fit if you're doing this on a 911, like a 997, for mm -hmm. example. But with the room I had, I couldn't. So I had to put it into fifth gear, pull the parking brake, and do the tightening that way. Which, not the right way to do it. Um, it's something I'll have to address in the video. Uh, and I'm going to go back and I think I know what I need to do um, over the winter to um, retighten that. Which, you know, my, my crank pulley seal is actually leaking, so I have to go back in there anyway. It's, okay. it's a little bit wet. I noticed your belt was, your original belt was yeah, not in the best of condition. It so had, it was a good thing that you, re, you went in there. Yeah, I put that on 15,000 miles ago when mm. I first got the car. And it's got tiny little chunks on the outside taken out of it. Like not like something was maybe catching and scratching every once in a while. Mm. It's not all over the whole belt, but... So I'll have to keep an eye on that. We'll s don't know what it is. Yeah, and the nice thing about... Actually, for, for 911s as well as for Cayman Boxers, it's pretty easy to inspect mm -hmm. your belt. And now that you're going into the fall, you know, mm -hmm. if you're going to be changing your oil, just take a look at your belt. Because if you yeah. can see some cracks or some wear marks, mm -hmm. it's totally worth it. It's an inexpensive yep. thing to change. And it's yep. one of those things that if it goes, it can leave you stranded. Yep. And doing the work yourself, you know, just doing the pulley. I already bought a crank pulley seal, um, but I knew I wasn't going to be taking the time to do it, you know, when I installed the underdrive pulley. It wasn't really leaking anywhere. It was just you could see the oil was starting to dampen the seal. So I know now, you know, um, this winter, once the next two autocrosses are done, I'll be parking the car, uh, taking the oil out for a, a change, but I'll also be doing the seal at the same time. So it's, it's nice. You know, you get to know your car a little bit better and, and plan for future maintenance. Very good. So, a lot of fun. <laughs> so anyway, congratulations. That was uh, for SCCA. It's pretty tough because that's the... Uh... Not just Porsche, it's all the other cars. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah. And it's great to run against other cars and see what kind of times. And yeah. I think a lot of times when you go to these other events, people are pretty impressed about how well a stock Porsche does at an autocross. Like, they, yeah. I, I seem to always get that comment. They're mm -hmm. like, oh, what's done to your car? And I'm like, uh, nothing, just, you know, tires, really. Yeah. And uh, your car? Well, yeah, my car's pretty stock. Yeah. <laughs> what? Your, your car is like mine only i have camber plates and you don't basically right my car my car's pretty stock my car's pretty stock <laughs> yeah it is yep it's it's not super modified exactly yeah <laughs> anyways yeah. i think if i'm gonna if i'm gonna have a chance of catching up to you i might have to go to a7s so i think that's the, the quickest and the best bang for the buck to possibly catch you. But I miss not yeah. having enough time to do autocross this year. It kind of 
yeah too much travel yeah, very busy yeah but i was happy that um you know i was able to borrow uh loanne's um boxster for the ride up rode up with um rode up with tom gorsuch he and his wife w- were in town and we the drove boardwalk. up yeah drove boardwalk up to the boardwalk reunion about three hours and man i you know i really that is a great kind of touring car i mean it's fun to autocross too but because it's very stock save the motor (laughs) (laughs) nobody's gonna check (laughs) whose definition of stock (laughs) um it's it's just a great driving car i mean it's just a smooth it's the reason why they're laughing Excuse me, because it only has 0.4 liters of extra displacement. Yes, it, it originally was a 2.5 liter motor. It's actually now a uh, two uh, a a two Jake point, Raby. a Jake Raby 2.9 with uh, very special internals and stuff. And it's just, but it looks completely stock. Um, but it's that doesn't a, make it stock. Just because it looks stock. <laughs> it looks stock. But it's such a great car. Um, so, anyways, yeah. So. Uh, Getting getting up to Ocean City, New Jersey, and uh, I hadn't I missed last year's. This was the third annual, uh, although the very first Boardwalk reunion, or it was actually an event like it, was when so the registry had their the holiday. registry had their holiday there. So, uh, so this this was uh, an amazing event. We had they they met up at the the local airport, uh, three hundred and sixty or so Porsches, and then. Um, made their way over to the boardwalk and parked all the cars, all the cars on the boardwalk. And it was just a great sight. And man, it couldn't have been a better day. So uh, actually, my wife got up there on Thursday because uh, she really likes uh, Ocean City, New Jersey. So she wanted to go early. The plan was originally I was going to go too. But like you said, we were going to uh, be, we found that we had to film in Chicago, a tech video. So when that didn't work out, I saw some work to do down here. So. Uh, she went up on Thursday, and uh, I went up with you on Friday. I was literally your Vuber. You were my Vuber, <laughs> and uh, so uh, she got. The, I got to mooch off, mooch off her because she got a uh, room um, with the volunteers, and she was in the organizers, Bob and Ellen uh, Gutjar, and uh, they had a, a a condo, I guess, on the top level of this hotel, Flanders Hotel. There's four rooms. We got the kids' room. <laughs> and it took me a day uh, to realize we were in the kids' room because uh, uh, the sink, I'm going to say, was maybe 10 by 12. <laughs> I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> and then I realized that, uh, yeah, this is where they put the kids at. And this, but it was free, so I get, can't complain. Um, and we got to see, you know, the, the inner workings. Part of the entertainment is watching the... Um, uh, the complex relationship between Bob and Ellen <laughs> as far as the uh, organization and getting things done. Uh, but they had a pizza party on Thursday night for all the volunteers. They did some bag stuffing and uh, some final uh, details. And uh, like you said, we met at the, we, so we met at the airport, the um, Ocean State Municipal Airport was a staging area. And every, this is the third year and every year Bob uh, needs to be there at six o'clock even though no one else needs to be there, but he wants everyone there at six. Cars aren't supposed to come until what, like 8.30? 8.30, yep. Yeah. And I told him, I said, uh, and they're not like lined up by model. or It's not like Works Reunion or Sports Car Together where we got to mark parking spaces. And uh, true to form, we wait outside for 30 minutes for the guy to show up to open the door. And every <laughs> year, Bob's like, if he doesn't show up, I'm going to lose it. And of course, uh, when they stand by the gate, I get they're like uh looks like they're at the border trying to cross to get across <laughs> and the guy comes opens it up and we rush in and wait <laughs> for uh, everyone to show up but luckily the weather was beautiful so uh it wasn't uh, bad waiting and part of the fun really is uh hanging out there for two and a half three hours uh just uh drinking See, coffee and seeing all the cars oh yeah you got all these people and the cars are close together and you can uh hang out meet, meet new uh Porsche people and it's amazing you know I think about it that uh, really thing, only thing these everyone has in common is that they own a Porsche. Mm-hmm. And yet immediately, in a, you know, as you just walk up to someone, you can start a conversation just because you have that uh, common thread of owning a Porsche. And unlike Corvettes, where it's just one model, here, yeah. people with Cayennes, Macans, Panamera, every, everything. everything that Porsche made, including a 924 Turbo, which mm-hmm. I, you know, I told the owner, you're probably going to be the only one here with that car, was uh, present. 
and I saw families, which were cool, and you know the kids were having fun. They, you know, they they come in, they get a Dunkin' Donuts, and parents get the coffee. They're walking around looking at all these amazing cars, and then once they got onto the boardwalk, um, then now you have the general public sort of admiring the cars, and the the boardwalk was full. I mean, you kind of had to turn your shoulders walking uh, down the boards because it was just packed, and it was. Uh, a lot of um a lot of actually probably most of the stores were open so you still could do your sort of um you know beach shopping and uh, the best part was uh, we got to try the that hot pizza what was the name of that place that we Manco and Manco and anyone in Manco. Jersey evidently knows this place cuz oh, I, I mentioned somebody I said we went to eat pizza at this really cool place and he goes Manco and Manco I said I think that was it <laughs> yeah they have like this <laughs> these two rotisserie kind of ovens and Man, they were cranking yeah, it was very out. mesmerizing. It looked like two big money machines because <laughs> they would put dough in there and pizza would it, come out. It was and like every four minutes there were lines pizza and out lines there. of people, wow. uh, and it was delicious. So what I also thought was interesting was uh, so this boardwalk's a fairly good size for those of you who's listening who don't have boardwalks or, or don't live near the ocean or, or a body of water. Um, and they said that the uh, um, tenants of these uh, stores uh, get upset. If they're not included in the line of cars, so they want to, they want to make sure that the cars are spread apart to where it reaches their stores. Oh, and I thought for some reason it was the opposite. I'm thinking I wonder if they get pissed because we're, you know, not blocking yeah. the store, but we're taking space in front of the store, and it's the opposite. Oh, they really? Want, they want people to be walking, looking at, want, want to walk down and look at the cars, and they may stop and go in the store. Yeah. So Makes yeah, the, I think it was Ellen was telling me that uh, they got or Bob, uh, they were they were saying they got to space it to where. They have to reach a certain street mm-hmm. because they've tell they've told all these tele- tenants that they can open up their shops because the show will be part of it, and they advertise way ahead of time that we're going to be there. So that's why when we came up on the boards, there were so many people lined uh, up already taking pictures of the cars coming up, and uh, everybody behaved themselves. No yeah. one did anything stupid. Well, there were little. So, so I took the video where the cars were coming onto the boards there. So when I first got there, I saw this young kid. Uh, wearing a martini hat um, to the right of the rails uh, that you're looking at on on YouTube. And I thought he was with someone in the parade waiting for that person to come on the board. So I started talking and say, hey, how are you doing? You know, uh, are you here with someone? Are you, what car are you looking for? He's like, no, I just love Porsches. I'm like, you came to this? And you don't have anybody in the parade or anything? He's like, no. I was like, well, you're obviously an enthusiast. You're wearing a martini hat. He goes, I was here last year. And someone gave me the <laughs> martini hat, oh, well, so I cool. so I had my parents drive me back so I could be here this year to see it. And of course, I said, "So what? Uh, what do you? What's the car that you're hoping to see?" He's like, "I hope to see a GT3." And he got his wish. <laughs> he got to see a, a good number of GT3s. Yeah, say, and he was one. so excited. Um, someone dropped, <laughs> someone dropped their flag, and uh, we have replacements. I'm sure they got a replacement. And uh, I scooped it up and I gave it to the kid, and he was so excited. He was, he was probably like a eighth grader ninth grader but hopefully that's you know that's one where the seed is uh, exactly the, the yeah. seed is planted right so here where the boards are coming up i will tell you that um and i shared with bob that maybe we need to cross or, or block off the lines because usually people ride their bikes on the boardwalk and they announce it and i'm sure they've told people a million times but you always get someone that doesn't listen right and they got all upset because they couldn't ride their bikes on the boardwalk even though they're making announcements oh, saying yeah. make it. Yeah, make your way off. Uh, you have to come off the boardwalk once yeah. the Porsches are on. But Yeah, so there's uh, always a couple. It's uh, yeah. It, it, for those of you who are thinking about attending this event, you're not too far away. Um, although there's that ferry that people from uh, Virginia were taking. Um, Over to Lewis. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so people came from like seven, eight hours away. And it's a, it's a fun event because there's no competition. It's uh, Scott Johnson. I told him I would see this on the podcast. He called it Parade, parade in a Day. I'm parade not in sure a day. that's really uh, 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 accurate. It, uh, it the spirit like it, is. It rhymes, but it's, um, it's a lot of camaraderie. Um, uh, they have three tech sessions they do inside this one building right off the boards. Uh, I, I'm not sure how many people actually made it because it was beautiful weather. If it rains, I'm sure the tech sessions will be popular. Uh, but they did do three tech sessions. Uh, uh, while the event was going on, and uh, we never got to see the whole. No, show. so so Manny and I we came 
prepared to do some videos. We're going to give it to Damon here to edit, but we picked probably 10 or 11 of our favorite cars that we actually got to see. And to cover 360 some cars on the board, we did what, like three quarters of the lineup? Yeah. Um, I couldn't even record uh, coming onto the boards. I, I, I tried to get everyone, but what happened was towards the end of the parade onto the boards, they got backed up and they actually had to stop for a while. So it just didn't make sense for me to sit there and wait for them um, to come on the boards. But we'll put together a video, share some of our favorite cars that we saw there. And then for those of you that were on the um, um, the boards, you'll see the video where I record everyone coming onto the boards. And again, I apologize for not getting the last maybe 20 cars because they were just stuck there as they were yeah. waiting for it to clear. What's monkey bread? I just saw that on one of the photos here. Oh, uh, Vu, I was you're very disappointed that monkey bread was close. Oh, I was super disappointed. What are they? What is it? Monkey bread is like is like a biscuit kind of a thing with lots of cinnamon and sugar yeah. and Sounds it just good. it oh yeah it is good. Is that like a ocean city sort of thing or no no it's, no. it's just it's just an amazing dessert yeah. bread thing that actually justine <laughs> makes an amazing monkey I feel bread like, uh, Damon has lived a very deprived life when it comes to food. There's a reason why he's skinny, because he yes. doesn't know about monkey exactly. bread. <laughs> I don't know about monkey bread. <laughs> I'll have to ask Justine for the uh, recipe and make it yeah, for you. We kept on walking back and forth to see if they were I was thinking it was going to open later, and I kept <laughs> I walking back. never did. No, never yeah. did. But, uh, wah, wah, so, wah. Uh, of course, uh, when you hang out with Bob Gutyard, it's never uh, it's always an adventure with stuff that he does and things that happen to him. So he brought a speedster because I think the theme was something. Uh, oh, you're not going to go there, are you? Or, oh, of course, I got to. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> speedsters and roadsters or something. Anyways, he brings his 89 speedster. And uh, it's a beautiful car. I always like to tell people. I he trailered it. I babysat it, it for a, a summer. Um, 6,700 miles. I think it had like wow. less than 2,500 when I babysat it. And uh, he had the top up on it because in the morning we had some more to do and it was uh, a little bit cooler. And I looked at it, and the top wasn't um, like fully extended. There was just a, a little crinkle you could see in the in the rubber seal. And I said, I, I don't think your top's all the way. And he goes, No, no, it's just it's just been like that. So of course we start looking at it, <laughs> and and you look from the inside, you can see that one of the uh, the bolt at, um, into the hinge was bent. Ooh. And uh, the, the, now the 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 so the bolt was backed out. So therefore, the um, the frame of the top wasn't perfectly aligned. Mm -hmm. So it had it it created it wasn't actually bent. It was just you know it looked bent because it wasn't fully tightened up because mm -hmm. uh, the bolt had backed out. So by somebody says, "Well, I got some uh, tools you can use," and, and I'm like, "Bob, I'm like, listen, we're going to be leaving here in like two hours. Don't I'm telling you, you start working on this, something's going to happen, and you're going to be able to put it down or put it up, and it's going to look like crap." Just leave it alone. Don't look at it. I'm sad. I'm sorry I even brought it up. And of course, he couldn't. So uh, someone else uh, removes the bolt, and like uh, Boo said, it was it was gone. The uh, bracket where the, uh, the screw went into uh, was uh, done. It was uh, stripped. So Ron Gordon, our future vice president, he's like, uh, we got to tap a new hole. <laughs> Bob does not know what tap means. He's like, oh boy. well, how do we do this tap thing? <laughs> oh, <laughs> and that means it's not going to get fixed now. No. Right? No. I we'll mean, have... unless there's a Harbor Freight down the street. And... No. No. <laughs> no. No one's going anywhere. I asked him, I said, are you showing it with the top up or down? And he says, down. I'm like, well, there you go. I said, just put it down. And you're, you're like, we said, you towed this thing, so you don't have to worry about driving it home. Of course, he goes wants to take it down right then because he doesn't want people coming in to see it. It did look well. pretty bad. I'm like, the window's wet, the top's so wet, just leave it alone. You got two hours to let this thing dry, then you put it down, and you won't them. So you don't want to make things worse with this window that's plastic and it's original. Uh, so uh, <laughs> he left it halfway down, halfway it up looked terrible. while it dried. <laughs> of course, everybody now is really looking at it because you're walking I by took photos. I took photos of the four of you around it, and then took the photos... <laughs> Of the aftermath, and it looks terrible. But I didn't know that you were going to talk about it today, so I didn't upload it. Yeah, I took some pictures too. I should have given Robert the. Uh, but that's a, that's that's a advice for those of you that are at events, and if you notice that there's something minor wrong with your car, don't try to fix it right yeah. then and there because Murphy's law: you're going to attempt to do it and make it worse, and then all of a sudden you're stuck. There was a lot of people who looked like they were conquering their car, and I was thinking, this is. No judging. We're just parking no. on the uh, <laughs> on the boards, and that's it. It's a pretty relaxed event because my wife was like, "Should I wash the car?" 
And I said, uh, what does it look like? She goes, it looks clean. I'm like, well, leave it alone. It's, yeah. Uh, that I brought cleaning supplies as an emergency, not something that you have to uh, have to do as soon as we get there. So I left um, midday on uh, on Saturday. You stuck and around. Because your, your hall pass ran out. My hall pass was running mm-hmm. out. I needed to be home before dinner, which I did. Um, you stuck around. There was, a, there was an evening banquet. Yes. Uh, it was um, much larger than last year. Last year was pretty big. About 300 people. That's awesome. So let me ask you something. Is prime rib considered... The best cut? No. I didn't no, think so. I'm the wrong person. I would say ribeye, right? Yeah, ribeye. To me, a ribeye or a fillet is or probably. Porterhouse is a ribeye and a fillet, right? That's like the, that's like the whole shebang. Yeah. 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 No, but, but, but usually that is like the holiday, you know, the, the holiday protein that's like What's tender. What's that, ribeye? No, no. The, um, the one that you had at the party. Oh, prime rib. The prime, prime rib. rib. Prime yeah, rib. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I, I asked Bob what's, what's uh, on the banquet, and he said prime rib. I said, so we had last year. Yeah. And he said, but it's the best. It's the best cut of beef. And I said, I don't think it is. And he was saying. I like prime rib. Hmm? I like prime rib. Not the it's best. Okay. It's okay. It's a little bit, sometimes, I guess maybe because it's a banquet, I, the cuts I always get have a lot of fat on them. Oh, that's the best part. <laughs> yeah, no, I avoid fat as well in the same way. I mean, I like flavorful like, fat, trust yeah. me. But I that's... just don't like the feeling when you're chewing fat. So it's got to be filet mignon or I cut around the fat. On Say a, fillets like a are ribeye. like the least uh, yeah. flavor because there's no fat. Right. Fat yeah. is like uh, are it's too nature's small. butter. And we're yeah. here we have digressed to our culinary uh, <laughs> attractions. But no, I, I was, uh, I was th- so anyways, uh, the, the prime rib wasn't that bad uh, this time. And it was better than chicken, banquet chicken. Oh, this is something else I learned. So uh, we're, we're every uh, PC members are going to have a new vice president next year, Ron Gordon, uh, currently the parade chair. Uh, Ron was traumatized by chicken because <laughs> because uh, I said something like uh, uh, we should have fried chicken instead of uh, Ooh. yeah I said that'd be a good change of pace and he's like no way he goes I'm not eating fried chicken I'm like what do you get uh, fried chicken I said what because of health reasons he goes no he goes I don't eat chicken huh. and didn't like, realize I'm that like, who doesn't eat chicken. And he's like, uh, banquet guess, chicken or no, just any chicken, chicken, any chicken, really? So of course I've got to ask, I'm uh-huh. like, what's, what's up with chicken? They get attacked by chicken at some point. And he said his mother <laughs> would always overcook it. Oh. And his father would do the same thing on the barbecue. It basically cook it to the point. It was almost dust. Oh. That's how dry it was. Oh. And, so you keep chewing and chewing yeah. and chewing. I could understand yeah. if that's so, a chicken you're never, eating that you would never want chicken. So I'm like, so yeah. you haven't tried a good fried chicken. And he's like, uh, he goes, I go to that place near the office, your guy's office. And I said, Royal Farms? And he uh-huh. goes, yeah. He goes, I've tried that. They're not too bad. Yeah. He goes, but it's never my go-to. He goes, I try to avoid it. All right. Here's, here's, here's my, my question for you guys and the listeners. White meat or dark meat? Go. Well, doesn't matter. So both, yeah. Uh, no, you see. Whoa, there whoa, you go. whoa, whoa, whoa. 30-inch whoa, whoa. waist boy yeah. doesn't. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> also, here's the, I used to like the white meat, but then I realized that dark meat wasn't like dirty or whatever. It was just Dark meat flavorful. is the best meat. So, yeah. No, it, it's the most flavor. Most flavorful. Me. Yeah. I'm not picky. Yeah. <laughs> he's not picky about food. That's why he's skinny. He That's right. it's, it's just, su- <laughs> was it sub- sustenance to him? I eat when I'm hungry. Yeah. It's, uh... If that was the case, I'd be skinny. <laughs> White meat doesn't have much flavor to it. Yeah. It's a dark meat. Uh, yeah. It can though. It can. I've had good white meat, but very rarely is white meat good. Yeah, but then you got to put a lot of. Uh, you, know, you have to. Um, was it brine so, it? And all yeah. That so I stuff. like sauces. So I put sauce in anything anyway. So it probably doesn't matter what kind of meat I eat. No, because there's still the, the the moisture of the meat itself. Like yeah. you take a dry piece of chicken and put it. White in meat's sauce. chewier, and if you get it yeah. wrong, it's, and it just like yeah. sucks the. Yeah. yeah. It just, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, I thought that was interesting about Ron that he's been traumatized by chicken. Well, if you notice, I don't think we've had a chicken or very many chicken dinners at parade. He's pretty adamant about not having chicken. I, I, and, I not, don't, and I I don't and I don't I don't disagree with him. I don't, I'm not a fan. So of So instead, we go to uh, what did we have like four times? Uh, uh, not <laughs> short, uh, short ribs. ribs. Short ribs. Short ribs, yes. short ribs are good. I was though. like, wow, they must have bought like a whole tractor trailer load of short ribs. They <laughs> so were having it every night. Oh. I can't. I can say that I've never had uh, a. a a uh, a banquet dinner at parade that I haven't enjoyed. They're all good. I've always liked the food. Yeah, yeah. Usually it's great. Yeah. So mm-hmm. even chicken, we've had it's good or parade. exceptional. Yeah. yeah. Well, exactly. you get, you walk in with a lowered expectation because it's a well because you think it's a banquet. Yeah, and, exactly. But, yeah. yeah. Usually people it's, who complain are the ones no, who think I tell they're going to get what, a Michelin we, meal at a banquet. We are we 
definitely do tastings or the the pre actually all our events especially treffin like food is so important yeah. to our members like we don't go to places if their food is bad yeah yeah and if and if they do something if they promise us one thing and they delivered something else that's no bueno like, yeah that's a big deal yeah so i did um i did what did i do fun in the garage oh I, last time we talked about how i i installed um the um you know, term no how do you say it term ignoni exhaust on my oh. ducati i'd have to look at the word okay anyways yeah. um i told you that they had inserts and of course the thing didn't come with instructions i didn't realize it and it sounded good when i first installed it but uh my buddy was like did you take the inserts out of the exhaust i'm like uh i didn't know it had inserts sure enough it had inserts i don't know if robert has the photos of those the, the mufflers on the motorcycle but yep two screws pulled out the inserts and oh my goodness yeah. it's basically like going from non-sport exhaust it's like going to from my car to connor's car oh uh, but it sounds good though <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think Connor's car, for the record, Connor has an M2, basically straight you, pipes. It you, sounds good. You no, think his doesn't. exhaust sounds yeah, good? Yeah, it sounds no. good. No, and it's very like, loud. This is his no. white meat is better argument. No. Oh, gosh. No. <laughs> Although, your your it, Toyota sounds better in the tunnel yeah, than his car does. It, it does, because you it at does. least have some bass, exactly. some lower tone. Yeah. His, his car, his car has no lower tone. It's tones. like a weed whacker without uh, any exhaust and on it. And it's not a thing on the BMW. It's just, I think the exhaust he had on it sounded better than the exhaust he put is on that it. Is that car yeah. normally aspirated or turbocharged? His car? Turbocharged. His car's turbo. Maybe yeah. that's why it Pretty sounds much crappy. All. Yeah. yeah, well, you can hear the turbo noises. and I. Yeah, but it sounds great. The only thing that doesn't sound good is like the, the track brakes because they squeal. But exhaust? Yeah. Love it. Someone's phone's ringing or shake. Oh, and that's Rob Sass calling me. I'll, uh. have, to call, I'll have to call him back. <laughs> all right. Uh, what else did you, did you do Sunday? Sunday you stuck around. You didn't go home right away, right? Yeah, because I had the wife, so we had to take things leisurely home. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I got in home, uh, home in time to watch the Ravens loops oh. again. Oh, that's sorry. So far, I'd say. And what's worse is uh, the Steelers won, so I'm not even comforted by the fact that they lost as well. <laughs> <laughs> we did, uh, did we, you guys have one mile reviews coming up Thursday? Well, not? Saturdays. Uh, so we, oh, we're we're no, driving we're, on Thursday. Yeah. yeah. So um, we were hoping to drive an 88 924S. I confirmed that that can't happen next week, probably sometime in uh, November. If, what about uh, the Macan for the fourth one? Macan when um, Vu is back in town, because I believe, Vu, you're going to be in Vegas for work. And so we're, we're, we're just going to film drive later. His Macan or? You guys can drive it. It doesn't matter. Yeah, maybe we can set it up. So yeah. we have three cars now. I think it's an 05 Turbo I, S. I think he doesn't want me to drive it because I drove the uh, the SC in the gravel. And then when the way I pulled into the gravel lot, <laughs> he's like, you better not do that in my Macan. I'm like, well, you know, no guarantees. <laughs> he's like, yeah, maybe but... I'll have Manny drive it. When did he get the Macan? I didn't know he had one. So he did like this surprise. Oh, my gosh. He's going to be so enamored that we mentioned his time. I think it's like the fourth time we've referenced him on the, a podcast. You're welcome, Paul. But uh, he just does. He provides us content, and that's why yeah. we talk about him. But congratulations to him. I think he got a 2021 Macan S yes. in nice. Carmine Red with black interior. Uh-huh. And he's really stealthy about it. Like, I know he's been looking for a while, but he tries to, like, surprise you or try to say, oh, I'm going to get one. I'm not going to get one. And then on Sunday, I was going to Cars and Coffee, and I saw the Carmine Red um, Macan coming in my direction. I'm like, oh, that's fall. He got the car. Yeah, that's so, funny. Yeah. Well, maybe we should reach out to him. But yeah, we're it's a 05 911 Turbo S that has um, a GT2 clutch, a couple light mods that probably mm-hmm. just improve it's driving Scott's, feel. Uh, one that he bought. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. So an 05 <laughs> Turbo S, a 991.2 Turbo S, yeah. which we've all driven, just never on a one-mile oh. review. Um, and then, uh, gosh, what's the last car? It's got my 914. And your 914, yep. So those are the three you we have. Driven, you've driven... Rob's. I drove Rob's. Uh, it felt great, except it was the worst shifter I've ever. Now, what didn't you like about the shifter? Is it the blue car? You couldn't. Yeah, the blue car. Oh, you yeah. didn't really know what gear you were. You yeah, kind of just kind of stuck it somewhere had, and hoped it was the right gear. Had, I never drove it, but that has the later shifter. Side shifter. The better shifter. Did it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was. I've never that's driven not, a worse. That's <laughs> not to say that the you know the uh, the, the bushings may have been gone yeah. or uh, no. It no. was it was pretty much you know just you know row back or forward and hope you got the right. What gear. other nine hundred one transmission cars have you driven? 
Probably not. I think the earliest 911 I've driven is um, Vic Roll is old 72. That's the oldest 911 I've driven. When did he switch over? Was it remits? Uh, was that uh, Vic's 15? would have been a 915. Yeah. Yeah. By then. Yeah, because yeah. 901's so, a different. Uh, Different field in the night. If the 901's worse than what was in that blue car, um, yeah, I, I'll never own a car. But, like like what I'm getting at, I guess, yeah. you know, you can't compare it to a modern car. Yeah. Like yep. for, for my car, uh, an Indy 914 owner knows this, and maybe unless if you just had your transmission rebuilt. Yeah. But from uh, first gear, which is the dog mm-hmm. leak to the left, the second, there's like a half a second pause. Yeah. In yep. the second gear, otherwise you're grinding the gear because. Yep. So I've driven cars with 915s before, you know, like the the rental 911 in Arizona a few years back, and um, that probably wasn't the best sorted transmission, but it wasn't bad. And Nathan Mers drove it, and he knows mm. those cars well, and he told me it wasn't the best 915, but it was a heck of a lot better than whatever was in the 914. So I'm assuming there was something up with the bushings, but yeah, like I remember, even though it was a long time ago, driving my 72 914. It's like. It's not defined. Yeah. And it's... when you shift, you really have to take it easy. And then mm-hmm. when you're putting it into the next gear, you go slow enough just in case you're not putting it into the right gear because it'll grind. Yep. And then you kind of adjust a little bit and then you put it where it should be. Um, you have to be deliberate. What's, what's, where you're what's putting in it? The, the 58 speedster that I drove? What transmission did that? This is a four speed. Uh... Not a 901, 41 transmission. It's a okay. regular 56. But, it's but not a uh, nine series. It's not a nine series. Okay. But even like that one. That one actually felt pretty good. Yeah. I, I think it all depends on a lot, you know, like a 901 or or even a 915. A lot of these transmissions are well used and maybe not need a refresh. Haven't yeah. been refreshed in years, so I think it adds to the vagueness to it. But mm-hmm. I think a well sorted one, even in this 58, it was actually pretty easy to drive. You don't shift it like a modern car, but mm-hmm. it wasn't hard. Well, when I drove your G50 87, yeah, it felt much different than my 964 G50. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for yeah. sure. But it's still light years ahead of some of these other transmissions. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, uh, it'll be, uh, looks like good weather for uh, doing some one-mile review. Yeah, so speaking of well-sorted transmissions, the uh, video, the, the one-mile review that dropped on Saturday was uh, Mia's Safari 911, mm-hmm. and that one had a amazing 915 in it, mm-hmm. and also a Weibo, a Weibo shifter. Mm-hmm. It felt every bit as good as my yeah. g50 the like first a, story yeah. i wrote out of college uh for another porsche magazine i did drive a uh, a hot rod 74 911 that had a um a g or a, a 915 with the, the weebo and i remember that being a very nice and positive shifter but yeah. so long ago well let's get in some into some uh, porsche news and uh the first one we're talking about uh the macan ev well, it's, it's been uh, delayed now till uh, it's supposed to be 2023 when we saw it come out. Uh, but not because of supply issues, but um, evidently software development issues. Hmm. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, it's um, one of the reasons Herbert Dietz, the um, XVW chief, got canned was because of development problem delays. That was um, an issue with the ID3 and the ID4, mm-hmm. the VW. Or the software seems to be their biggest. Yeah. So I wonder how much is like. Hurdle. You know, between the Volkswagen platforms that are all electric and then the Taycan platforms, the software. I mean, to me, it seems as though they have those platforms sorted. But how much does it change when it goes into a Macan? Still, I mean, the news that also came out was that uh, that a software update has increased the range of the Taycan. Mm. Pretty significant amount. Yeah. yeah. And so the Macan's going to use the same platform as the Taycan. Right. The 800-watt system. And... Uh, um, I think we're going to, obviously, we're going to see this with EVs for the next decade. You're going to have a steep learning curve. Yeah. It's almost like someone doing driver's ed for the first time. I mean, every session they go out, they get huge improvements versus like somebody who's been doing it for 10 years. They might not even see an improvement right. uh, just because they're doing more days. Uh, with EVs, we're going to see a lot of things almost monthly uh, changing. Technology. As, as sure. As they discover yeah. more stuff and they, uh, they're able to refine. Um, so, uh, I would, I, I wonder if they were planning to debut this at Rensport mm. since it was a 2023 model. Yeah. Maybe mm-hmm. they still will. It just or might something. not be yeah. complete, complete. By so then, we yeah. talked about how many chargers they're going to install at Laguna. Uh, so it would be great to have, a some prototype Makani V's 
to shuttle people around. Oh yeah, that would be yeah, a huge be cool. uh, uh, introduction of where you get people who are on the fence about a electric uh, Macan, but see uh, how quiet it rides and how much power it has. So I'm very excited, sort of, about the electric future. I, I will love to have one one day, but until then, I think uh, we need to reflect on the recent Tech Tactics Live where we talked about non petroleum oil because i tell you what while i was waiting for or watching those cars come onto the boards there were some sweet sounding engines from the modern water-cooled engine to i remember seeing a couple of long hoods that had the smoothest sounding um you know carb carb carbureted engines and then some 356s that came on the board that just sounded like you know smooth sewing machines like i'm gonna miss that um, but maybe this recent topic that we covered on Tech Tactics Live is going to extend our ability to enjoy um, internal combustion engines. So you can find that on the same YouTube channel if you're watching YouTube, uh, uh, the podcast on YouTube, or you just go to Porsche Club of America. It, it was a, uh, I found it interesting. It was one of our vendors, but that's not the reason why we chose it as a topic. Otherwise, we'd have yeah, uh, we weren't paid a lot to of shows we weren't, about vendors. We weren't paid to feature them. We no. were just curious about their technology. Yeah, I saw on their ad, when I was walking by the tent, I saw it said non-petroleum. That kind of piqued my interest. And so when we got back to the office, I, I Googled them and uh, did some reading, and I thought it was really fascinating that uh, you know, it's basically a plant-based oil, but uh, it's a lot of chemistry involved in science and how they isolate the molecule that makes oil what oil is. And uh, or at least motor oil, and uh, yeah, at the show it was insane how many questions they were going on. Mm -hmm. And Zach from uh, Evolve, uh, from Evolve, the uh, company we were featuring, uh, he was on the uh, chat part answering questions. And there was a lot of interest, uh, not necessarily people who are going to switch over, but you know, they wanted to see what's involved with something that may be the future um, as uh, we go to more and more green uh, renewable energy. Um, like you said, to extend the life of our uh, cars. But I think events like Boardwalk Reunion will be the, where we'll show off the, uh, the the internal combustion engine. Because my wife asked me on the way home, she says, "You'll you, do you think we'll see the end of these gas cars in our lifetime? And I said, not in our lifetime. I said, but we, it'll be like these shows where we'll bring the cars out and people will ask us to turn it on. Yeah. And especially the older cars where you get to see everything moving and the fans and everything. And I said, and they'll be... Uh, you know, just like we are now, they're going to be a, 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 just a, amazed that everything works in such perfectly timed sync. Yeah, and, and in harmony. Just, <laughs> in harmony, a symphony, and it, um, it'll be pretty cool. Just like when we see horses. I mean, everyone loves to see horses. We're always amazed at their size and how strong they are. Uh, but there's what more horses now than there was in the 1800s. Hmm. So one of the things from the show that really blew my mind, I never knew, was you know the synthetic oil that i put in my cars aren't truly i mean they're synthetic but they're still petroleum based i i don't know why i didn't know that but i didn't i always thought because you see synthetic oil you're thinking oh it's probably made of something else yeah but it's still petroleum based and that was the one sort of little nugget that i came away with i was kind of like huh and then this new stuff that is plant-based eh, pretty cool and, and i know i know some of uh, some of you that watched the show asked, um, uh, was it Lee? Lee was his last name. Rick Lee. Rick Lee, uh, questions that uh, he couldn't answer directly because it's such a new technology and they have some NDAs and they're working, I'm sure working with Porsche or, or other manufacturers in developing, um, further developing the oil and going through testing, but then also and, working and, on, uh, yeah. on, yeah. uh, Biofuel, right? I was going to say, yeah, the fuel part is uh, we would have loved to touch on that, but the yes is not to because they're still in the middle of working with Porsche and there's a lot of proprietary information that um, they said they didn't, they didn't want to touch base on that yet. But um, obviously, these manufacturers are all looking at renewable energies and biofuel is a, a big, big thing. Yeah, the Haru Oni plant in Chile mm -hmm. is where they're producing that now. And that's the one Porsche has an interest in. Yeah. What's it called? Uh, Haru Oni. Haru Oni. Okay. Yep. H A R U O N I. And um, that's where I guess some of the race cars get the fuel that yeah. they use I to race now. The Career so, Cup series, or one of them uses that yeah. exclusively. Yeah, one of the, it's one of the career, I think European Career Cup. I'm Maybe, not sure yeah. if they, they're doing that here in the U.S., mm -hmm. but if you think about it, you know, uh, Porsche has been making so many special editions 
um, and their you know their their best cars are are very expensive, you know, and not a lot of people, you know, relatively speaking, can afford it. Um, but you know, as as more people adopt EVs, my thoughts are is things like these um, uh, synthetic fuels and, and synthetic oils are going to be what keeps those that that one percent, two percent of people who own these amazing cars that I personally think Porsche is going to keep making internal combustion engine cars just a lot fewer and they're going to cost a lot more and mm-hmm. the fuel is going to cost a lot more if you want to enjoy that sort of experience. Right, right. Yeah, from so, a business standpoint, I, I don't see them making them. In, yeah. I, I see them go all, all electric from a business standpoint. I think almost all electric and then they're going to keep, I think, one department, like a classic department. Yeah, making exactly. Them. They may be able to I service think, them, but, yeah. because they're not really even developing yeah. the GT3 engine anymore. It's mm-hmm. staying the same uh, horsepower, it's just aero. Yeah. Um, How's this for development? Slap a couple turbochargers on it, and that's that's a development right there, huh? <laughs> it's it's. I mean, uh, at least in our lifetime, and probably the next generation, at least uh, it'll still be around. Mm-hmm. And like you said, the sound is just intoxicating. Like, yeah. you're not going to see minivans. I mean, no. when they die, they die, and they're going to go electric. Or pickup trucks eventually will go that way too. You know, the ones that have utility and functionality. I mean, can you imagine Ferrari without a V12? Are in their lineup in and the future. I mean, that would be. Players. I think I heard one of the podcasts, maybe it was Smoking Tire, about how Lamborghini is nearing the end of their normally aspirated. Really? Mm-hmm. Normally aspirated. It's yeah. all going to be turbo. Okay, yeah. turbo charge. Yeah. That's so fine. Um, but, you know, one time everyone was like, no, no, it's got to be normally aspirated. But yeah. uh, it's slowly, slowly, uh, uh, you know, slowly changing around. But there's so many, so many things in, in history. You look back at automotive that people said it, it was the end. You know, when unleaded fuel came around, yeah, you know, that was the oh. end of engines. You know, you need the lead, and it's, uh, it's progress. Well, yep. speaking of time, speaking of awesome sounds, speaking of the GT3, and more specifically, the GT3 RS recently was in the news. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jörg Bergmeister, I think, is a uh, honorary PCA member. Yes. Um, <laughs> he was uh, tasked with uh, trying to... Um, get the most out of it. Uh, the weather was uh, fine, and they were able to do some uh, laps. It didn't break the break the production record, which goes to a, I think, AMG Mercedes. That was yeah, twin, one of the black Twin versions. turbo. Yeah. So and then there's a Lamborghini Performante. I, I think it was an Aventador or a Huracan, but one of them. So basically 649 and, and change for the new GT3 RS. I believe the stock non-Manti version of the GT2 RS from the previous generation, that got like a 647 or a 648. So, you know, just imagine. You know, the only reason I think the GT3 RS, well, one that it went as quickly as it did was a downforce, but also on, on a long straight straightaway like this one, if you're watching the YouTube channel, or at the end of the lap, you're losing so much time. You're going 15 kilometers an hour slower mm-hmm. on the low end compared to a normal GT3. Um, so just imagine when they slap a couple turbos on that and hopefully make a GT2 RS in the future. I'd be, uh, I bet below 640 for sure. So that GT3 RS is faster than any, like, ever produced Porsche supercar, right? It's faster than Carrera GT, faster than yes. 918 Spider, yep. faster than... Yeah, yeah, it's faster than a 918. That's a good point. Right. Yeah. But the Carrera GT is old now. I, I mean, know. You know, yeah. it's not young anymore. It's I know, but got... if you look at a Carrera GT, you yeah. just think that that car has yeah. to be faster. Well, than Carrera GT that... got, I think it was a 732 or a mm-hmm. 734 in the first GT3. Didn't the Turbo GT break the Carrera GT? The Cayenne? No, it was, was it like short? eight seconds slower. Okay. But I mean, goes to show. But like the first GT3 996, I believe Walter Roll did like right around eight minutes wow. back in the early 2000s then the cgt 732 and then 918 i think was like 655 or wow. something so yeah 500 horsepower so do, is this is the new gt3 rs faster than the previous gt2 rs no no it's like it's still a it's, second or two at the nurburgring slower uh, okay yeah it's all that downforce all that downforce yeah but just think, they're going to follow suit and bring out the next King Kong. We can only imagine. Yes. They've done it over and over the past they will. decade, right? They will. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. fun to watch. and uh... There's more. Yeah. <laughs> Downforce and power. That'll, yeah. Be, that'll be fun. 
All right, what's this? What's the next one here? GTD efforts. Uh, Kelly Moss uh, announcing they're going to have a two-car effort running the new uh, new uh, GT3 uh, R in uh, the IMSA series. But more importantly, on that uh, news article, it said they're eye- eyeing a possible um, LMP entry in 25, mm-hmm. the 963, uh, mm-hmm. which uh, that's, this is what I'm really hoping for, to relive the days of uh, IMSA GTP where you have these top uh, – all these different manufacturers and customer teams running, uh, you know, these uh, prototypes. Yeah. Uh, well, the, I, I got I got in on the tail end, like the last year of GTP. Got to see it, but it certainly wasn't. Uh, I was, but uh, beginning of high school when the uh, GTP heyday was uh, on. So I would love to see. Uh, I can't wait to next year with all these manufacturers to see how they do. Hopefully Porsche's on top. But uh, hopefully it's also a very good show with all the manufacturers. Yeah, that thing looks wicked. Wow. Yeah, the 963 looks more geared to customer usage than the uh, 919 was. Mm. 919 really. Oh, yeah, 919. It wasn't, wasn't built to be, it was pretty much all just run as a factory because it was so complicated. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Good, good for Kelly Moss. And, uh, very cool. Homegrown team from the U.S. and North America. It'll be fun to watch him. The more and more we talk about next year, I hope all of you are prepared. There's going to be so much going on in our world. I'm, I'm excited and overwhelmed all at the same time. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about the brand store in Stuttgart. You know, when I saw this, I thought you might have seen this when you were in Germany because it came out, I think, the week after you were in Germany. The week after. week after, but I thought they might have, like, sneak peeked you into no, the... Uh, no. uh, did yeah, you? I learned, uh, I learned about this on. I was browsing Instagram and saw Jeff Sport. Yeah, you know, posted some yeah. photos on that. And and uh, the the brand store. That's uh, it's more like a. Uh, am I going to say lifestyle or? Mm-hmm. You know, it's. Uh, so is this? I'm wondering. Is it like a, a Porsche design? Because they have Porsche design stores too, yeah. right? Right. No, I, but this I, is Porsche. Yeah. Just por- okay. Yeah. They, they say this is the future of dealerships as well, where it's a smaller, um, where you come in and uh, you're not looking at a parking lot of cars that you want to drive one off the lot, but rather uh, you come in and someone works with you and helps you choose your car, build mm-hmm. your car. Uh, and that's what I know Porsche always wanted was uh, where people order. And uh, you know, we were just talking about this on our database of uh, how many special editions there are by Porsche and try to keep track of them. Uh, and even if you don't get a special edition, you order a base Carrera, you can make it so uh, individualized that you can maybe have one of one with those specs. You know, that's uh, something that people always call up the national office asking, and we have to give them the same reply that Porsche does not release how yeah. many uh, cars they built with certain options. Um, but odds are you could have a very limited run that were exactly the way you want it. You just look at the options and do basic uh, math, and you can realize how different, I mean, the variations you can ha- mm-hmm. make just on a stock base or S uh, model. So this is a place to uh, make the car your own. You can even get your door sold with your name on it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I wonder how uh, this would do in the U.S. You know, as as we talked about, you know, we we approach in general buying it's- a car very differently. We do, and and like Manny said, you know, uh, mostly around the world, this is how they normally do it, and you get exactly what you want. But in the U.S. and or North America, we're so intrigued with instant grat- gratification, you know. So dealers order cars that can appeal to the widest masses. So you get cars that are not necessarily that special. Yeah, you get black, silver, you know, gray. Um, because it, you know, they can sell them, they can move them. You get some crazy color, it sits on your lot for six months. It doesn't help the dealership, so that's why they don't order those. Plus, they can mm-hmm. they can put these type of stores in more urban areas mm-hmm. because you don't need a huge footprint mm-hmm. to put cars or service. Tesla already does it, I guess. So there's some mm-hmm. success that, in the that, U.S. Yeah, so. I mean, I was thinking exactly that. There, yeah. there's the Tesla model where, you know, some people like my uncle didn't even go to the store. He just clicked everything <laughs> online and went to go pick it up. I think wow. uh, I'm sure a lot of manufacturers, but I know I'm talking with some people from Porsche, they would love to have the model of Tesla because in Germany they control the dealers mm. and uh, here they don't. Right. So there's a lot of independence and 
you know, they're always constantly fighting uh, with uh, the dealers that they adhere to the, you know, the, uh, the, the image, the corporate image of uh, that Porsche wants and being able to have these little stores where people just order directly from Porsche, basically they control the message. Mm. And uh, Tesla has you know, shown that that probably is the future, yeah. um, at least with uh, electric parts. Yeah, and, and I, I think the younger generation, their buying habits um, or the process of buying is, is, you know, us growing up, we always knew we had to go to a dealership and we knew had, we had this like dance. And that's that we when had you to did do. the research. Yeah, right? you did the research and then you go in, you have this dance with the salesperson and the salesperson dances over to the guy sitting up high in the sort of the manager's like look over area. And then you go back and forth and then you say, well, I'm going to walk out if I'm not going to get a hundred dollars less on my deal. And then you, and then, you know, then you walk towards your car and then the guy comes out and pulls you back in. Well, I think my man, like all that is just like, but, it is not is not appealing to the younger generation. Think about how much profit walked out the door because uh, you couldn't say, "Hey, look at all these options you can choose." Now, what you should really get is this, this, and this, mm. uh, which has a high margin. You can add on to it because, like you said, you had uh, to choose from what was available on the floor. And the salesperson, if he's anything worth their salt, they're going to make sure you don't go leave and, and order something and go to another dealer that has it. Yeah. They're going to convince you that what they have is the best and the other options that you want it, you don't really want. Yeah. And, uh, now, you know, it's, uh, that's why they're the most profitable car company because, you know, you can make it so individualized and order these options. Uh, you know, if you ever watch Nathan Mers and his videos, he does for PCA. Um, he loves these heavily optioned cars, mm -hmm. uh, because they have options that most people didn't order, but you know, are desirable now. Yep. Absolutely. All right, we want to give folks an update on upcoming events. Go with uh, Unstock to start. So uh, I think we're almost uh, we're nearing capacity. Uh, by the time you hear this, we might have reached, but not checked the, uh, I guess registration should be closing. Uh, this, this comes out next Monday. I think we still have, they still have a couple of days okay. after they hear this. Yeah, check out um, motorsportreg.com for Unstock. As some of the cars that have registered lower a lot of the cars they're really uh really unique and um uh and if you don't have a, a modified car you're more than welcome to come and uh hang out and uh it'll be a lot of fun no no charge or no tickets necessary to come watch um it'll be a lot of fun at, uh, i guess west coast customers doing tours you said yeah we're doing tours we'll have a dj we'll have this little beach area set up being just lounge around we'll have food trucks um some VI yeah, no, vips no are judging coming. no, no uh, judging it's simply just, just come hang out come hang and, out and uh, have some fun socialize and uh it'll be a good way to kill four hours yep exactly and then um the week week uh after that on friday we'll have the la uh auto show uh preview and uh it's just coffee and preview of the porsche booth registration for that event is october 19th same price as a regular LA auto show ticket. I believe it's $22. Yeah, by the time you hear this, though, registration will be open. Oh, yes. Yeah. It hopefully... tomor happens tomorrow. Oh, oh yeah. that's right. Well, hopefully you got in because there's only 200 yeah. and it sells out quick. It, sells it sounds quick. like a lot to 90, but oh. anyone who's been here, we have a lot of repeat uh, customers. If I you would will, say 80% is probably repeat. Yeah, they know that um, if you want to be able to sit in the Porsches, talk to a product specialist, um, uh, without uh, having the whole uh, huma all of humanity right behind you, uh, this is the best deal there is because uh, I've said it before, like five minutes before it opens up to the public, <laughs> you literally see everyone uh, from Porsche going to lock the cars up and you know you don't have the same access that you do during the uh, member preview. Yep. The other update uh, has to do with Tech Tactics West, and we're still kind of in a flux of, finding uh, the, the facility that's going to host us. We're working with Porsche and some of our partners here, and we'll keep you posted. We are, we are driven to have Tech Tactics West um, this fall, and uh, we're, just, we're just waiting for all these puzzle pieces to fit together, so stay tuned for that. Uh, the Zone Fest crews, uh, I've heard we're up to 600 Porsche owners or PCA members going on the cruise. Um, we, we know we have some VIPs registered as such as uh tim mcnair who's going to do some uh talks about uh detailing and, and stories we have nathan mers many of nathan mers uh fans are listening here 
again, incredible um, rates for you to be able to do an eight day cruise starting at four ninety nine a person. And that's not four ninety nine a day. That's four ninety nine a person for eight days worth of cruising. Um, and like me, if you want to go on a cruise, but not, you know, be completely bored because there's not anything else other than swimming and baking in the sun. Here's your chance to go on a cruise and have Porsche content and be around PCA folks. And uh, we have a really fun agenda. Um, the folks in Zone 12 and Princess Cruise Lines, it's going to be an awesome time. So hopefully I see some of you guys on board. Are you going, Damon? Not that I know of. <laughs> All right. What else do we uh, have? Are you, are you registered for, uh, because right before the member uh, preview at LA Auto Show, the media dates. <clears throat> Damon registered me, right? Yep, I did. Have you received an email? Uh, I have to check. Yeah, just double check. And if... <laughs> If it yeah. didn't, if it didn't go through, we'll we'll still we'll we'll uh, okay. I'll check the after this. Yeah, yeah because so. Porsche is going to have some new stuff, and uh, we hope to get a lot of uh, content out to our members with the uh, the. Um, so that's on cars. Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, but yeah. probably the n- schedule. Wednesday is the main day, I think, for for new car reveals. So we'll be there to get some some of the latest mm-hmm. intel on all the new models. Recording it so that we can share it with you all on YouTube. And usually it's a good time because uh, Porsche will have their uh, uh, key people with that model there. Mm-hmm. And uh, Damon did a great video last year about the GT4 RS, wasn't mm-hmm. it? Yeah. yeah. I forget. That it was did. like seven things about yeah. the car you didn't know. Or oh, anything, you see, so. when you're there in media days for people yeah. who have never been there, uh, they have um, uh, basically it's journalists, a lot of them with, uh, and I noticed last time they had a lot of cameras. And they're just getting contact. The public's not invited. It's obviously just yeah, journalism. So. Local news. Yeah. This is, you know, international news, bloggers, influencers, anybody who has a big following online. So the people uh, from Porsche know that that's why you're there. And so they're doing multiple interviews. Uh, this will be my first time doing the uh, press day. So I'm excited. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. It's a little less crowded than, you know, after the preview event on Friday. For mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Cool. The food area, food's not that great either. But there's oh, that, we, we got to go to that that place we went with that sandwich, the French dip place. Oh, we're there to work, not to go. Uh, <laughs> no, but we got to eat. I know, but that's after the uh, right. They'll what, bring in lunch. They do coffee and Red Bull all day, and I think they have like you that's know, all Damon needs. <laughs> banquet sandwiches or you know lunch <laughs> lunch plate. <laughs> all right, we are at the top of the hour. Anything else before we sign off? Check out the Macan GTS YouTube video, which dropped uh, earlier this week, or last week, I should say, by the time you hear this. All right. Well, thanks for listening. If you aren't currently a PCA member and own a Porsche, grab that VIN, head to PCA.org and sign up. And if you're looking for a Porsche, we have a test drive program. Same thing. Just go to PCA.org and sign up. Thank you for everyone that has given us ratings, and we look forward to hearing uh, or reading your comments um much appreciated with that remember to follow our podcast instagram page see behind the scenes photos videos porsche club insider all one word and if you'd like you can also send us an email at podcast at pca.org until next time stay safe and we'll catch you down the road